Hi, welcome to Type 2, where we discuss everything about Type 2 diabetes in a way that everyone can understand. I'm Dr. Vladimir Carvalho, and today we're going to talk about insulin resistance. But for some of you that follow this channel, you know that there are some chains already, right? I'm trying to record everything on my computer so that I can be able to make faster videos. You know, the whiteboard thing was taking a lot of time, but if it works, we'll keep it. If it doesn't, then we'll go back to the whiteboard. Today, we're going to talk about insulin resistance. I know there are a lot of videos out there on insulin resistance, but today I will explain to you a very simple concept related to insulin resistance that you need to know if you're dealing with type 2 diabetes or, you know, pre-diabetes. But if you have been here for a long time, let's say this is your blood vessel, you know that when you eat, your blood glucose will increase. A lot of glucose will get into your bloodstream, right? But this glucose doesn't just stay in your bloodstream, right? This glucose will go to your pancreas and get inside the beta cells of the pancreas and force them to release insulin. Now, what is this insulin going to do? You know that if you have a cell here, especially your muscle cells or your fat cells, insulin will bind to the receptors on the surface of cells. And when that happens, a lot of things will happen inside the cells that at the end will lead the transporters of glucose to the membrane of the cells so that this glucose can come and get inside the cells. So you will have a lot of glucose inside the cells. So this is basically what is happening. And this glucose, when they get inside the cells, they can be used for energy or they can be stored as glycogen or fat. So what happens with insulin resistance is a condition where you have insulin, the glucose is coming, going to the beta cells and forcing them to release insulin, but the cells are just ignoring them. So you need more insulin to have the same effect. For example, let's say that you were using 10. Now you need 20 and then 50. Well, we don't count them like that, but just, just know that we need more for you to have the same effect that was happening before with just little insulin. But why does that happen? First, you need to understand that your body is not a, a table or something, that everything is the same way and doesn't change. In your body, there is endless amount of changes going on every day. Some things are going up, some are going down. And in every situation, your body has a defense mechanism against anything. For example, for those of you that drink coffee, you know that the first time you drink coffee, maybe you don't sleep for two days. Maybe, okay, not two days. Like, you don't sleep. But then if you take it all the time, every day, a few times a day, there will come a time where coffee will do nothing to you because the body will counter that. You know, you want to know actually how coffee works. When you drink coffee, coffee will not give you excitement. The body will give you the normal excitement that you normally have. But every time your body is excited, there are some enzymes that will break down those things that, you know, were bringing excitement. But coffee can block them. So when you drink coffee, coffee is not making you excited, but every little excitement that you have will stay for a long time because the enzymes that were supposed to take care of them and bring your body back to normal are blocked by coffee. But if you do that for a long time, the body will start ignoring them. And after some time, coffee will do nothing to you. You know, you just drink it and sleep. So the same thing happens with insulin resistance. After a long time of too much insulin, your body will start to resist insulin. Now, a lot of things can happen. Things can happen here. Your receptors will be less sensitive to insulin. Things can also happen inside the cells, you know, because when you eat too much, your body will have glucolipotoxicity. That means a lot of glucose and fat will cause damage 
inside the cells. And you will have a lot of inflammation inside the cells. So these signaling pathways will not work properly. And all those things that were supposed to happen so that glucose transporters can come to the membrane will not work. So the problem can be here or inside the cells or, you know, in different places. But at the end of the day, your body is not responding to insulin. You have enough insulin. You have a lot of them, actually. But your body will just ignore them. Now, sometimes we say that insulin resistance is connected to your genetics. It's connected to, you know, your weight, your body weight, your high triglycerides, you know, uh, low HDL, you know, uh, maybe high blood pressure, a lot of things, right? But there's something that I want you to remember that beta cells do not release insulin whenever they want. Beta cell will not just decide to release insulin for no reason. Beta cells are forced to release insulin. So you need to understand that everything that is happening here, which is not good, is coming from something that is forcing beta cells to release insulin. Now, a lot of things can make your beta cells release insulin. For example, when you eat, your brain can send signals to your beta cells to start preparing some insulin, you know. And even your, your digestive tract, when they, they receive food, they can produce some peptides that can go to your, to your pancreas and make beta cells prepare and release a little bit more insulin. And a lot of things can make your beta cells release insulin. Your fatty acids, for example, your uh, amino acids. But you need to understand one thing. The main thing that will make beta cells release insulin is glucose, is blood sugar. This you need to keep in mind. That the main thing that makes your beta cell release insulin is glucose. So when glucose enters beta cells, everything else is forced. Glucose will get in and be converted to energy in the form of ATP. And this ATP will close potassium channel and then calcium channel will open and then insulin will be released. But if you want to know more about this, you can check type two diabetes number two. As I explained it a little bit better in that video, you can check it. So if a lot of insulin is in your blood, it's because of glucose, because of your blood sugar. Now, as I mentioned, uh, your genetics and, and your other things, some people are more likely to have this. You know, those people that tend to gain weight around the waistline will have more insulin resistance than those that gain weight around their legs, you know, lower part of the body. But always remember that the number one reason why you will have insulin resistance is because of the food you eat. Simply because if there's too much glucose in your bloodstream, Glucose will always enter beta cells because the entering of glucose into your beta cells is dependent on the concentration of glucose in your blood. More glucose in your blood means more glucose into your beta cells, which means more insulin, which means the cells will resist insulin. So it's not insulin resistance first, but it's too much food first, especially food that change to glucose. For example, sugary stuff and highly processed carbohydrates, refined carbs and things like that. Those will load your blood with glucose. I made a video about glycemic index and glycemic load. So if you want to check it, you can just check it here. Now we also talk about exercise sometimes because during exercise, your muscle cells can take glucose without insulin. And more muscles means that your body burns more glucose for energy, while more fat means more storage and more insulin resistance. Now, later, I'll talk about all kinds of medications used for type 2 diabetes. But you need to put in your mind that food is your main problem. Now, there's one thing that I want to mention 
Because every time we talk about insulin resistance, we only see the bad side of it. Because insulin is an anabolic hormone, which means it causes growth. It makes you expand, right? So that's why high levels of insulin in your blood is related to cancer and many other things. This is just an example. So we tend to say that it's bad. But today I'll tell you why insulin resistance is not always bad. Because as I said, when glucose comes and it gets in the beta cells, a lot of insulin comes. What will happen? The transporters move to the membrane and glucose will get inside the cells. So much more glucose will be inside your cells. And because you can't use them at the same time, they will be stored as glycogen and fat. So it means that if insulin always works, you will keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So insulin resistance is actually stopping you from becoming too big that maybe you can't function or something. So in this modern lifestyle, insulin resistance is the only thing that is stopping us from becoming like elephant because there is food everywhere and especially food that can turn to sugar quickly everywhere. If every time we put them in, they go to our cells and we keep growing and expanding, we would not be able to function. So it is a good thing. But the problem is that when this happens too much, insulin cannot make the glucose get into the cells, less glucose into the cells. Glucose will be where? Here, in your blood. Which means more glucose coming to your beta cells. More glucose coming to your beta cells, which means that your beta cells will be working too much. And after some time, they will start to die and your beta cell function will decline. So it can lead to bad outcome that we all know, which is type two diabetes, right? So we know that the end is not good, but somewhere in the middle, insulin resistance is trying to help you. But if you don't help yourself, by taking care of this, then you will end up here, right? So I don't know if I said everything I wanted to say, but I want you to keep in mind that insulin resistance is not actually insulin resistance. It's food resistance. Because your body is resisting insulin that is being forced by food, by glucose. So when your body resists insulin, it's resisting food. So I think we should not call it insulin resistance. We should call it food resistance. Because your body is resisting insulin that is being brought by force, by glucose. And the second thing I want you to remember is that if you did not have insulin resistance, and every time you put all this food that is out there in your body, we would be so large that we would not function. And the last one, always try to fix your problem before you lose all the beta cells. Because at that stage, you'll become almost like type 1 diabetes. But we'll not talk about this now. I think I'll stop here and see how it goes. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to the channel. If there's anything you want to know, you can just ask me in the comments section. I'll, I'll answer it. So have a blessed week. Bye.